This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in Aotearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. If you've followed the automotive industry for any length of time, you'd know that it's pretty common for automakers to join forces together to develop new automotive technologies. And this week, GM and Hyundai surprised everyone by announcing the signing of a new memorandum of understanding targeted towards doing just that, with the initial agreement covering a pretty wide swathe of potential collaboration topics, including the co-development of passenger and commercial vehicles, battery and hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, and sadly, also internal combustion engine vehicles. The MOU could extend to working on new battery technologies, we're told, but it's worth noting at this point that this is all very early days for both firms, and traditionally, memorandums of understanding are rarely legally binding. The Kia EV9 has quite quickly gained popularity since its official production launch back in May. But while the EV9 is selling well in the US, it's not yet eligible for US federal tax incentives. That's because right now, while small numbers of EV9s are being made in the US, Kia is currently using battery cells sourced from overseas, meaning it's not eligible for the full US federal tax credit. This week, we learned that despite its popularity, Kia has opted to hold off on ramping up its EV production in the US until it's producing large enough volumes of US manufactured battery packs at a new facility due to go online in the second half of next year. In short, you'll still be able to buy an EV9, but the full incentives won't be available until models built include US-made battery packs. After several successful pilot programs across the US, Ford has officially launched the California Power Response Program for Ford EV owners who live in the state. Different from the vehicle-to-grid pilot programs currently in operation, which require both V2G equipped vehicles and charging stations, the new California Power Response Program leverages smart grid technology to allow Southern California Edison and PG&E to pause charging of enrolled customers' cars during periods of high grid demand, reducing grid strain and negating the need for heavily polluting pika plants. Those who take part will be offered $1 in credits for every kilowatt hour of electricity not consumed during high demand periods, similar to a non-EV program we have here in Oregon, where I happen to be based. As we reported a few weeks ago, vertical takeoff and landing company Lilium has been contemplating moving its headquarters out of Germany due to a lack of governmental support. Now, in a bid to keep the company in the country, the German state of Bavaria, where Lilium is based, has offered the company 50 million euro in funding. But that funding promise comes with a catch. The German federal government must also make a similar investment. As of the time of filming, reports from Germany suggest that the German Federal Transportation Ministry is welcoming of the idea and it's promised to take the necessary steps to ensure it puts up its portion of the funds. But as with all politics, the funding isn't a done deal until the money has been transferred, so we'll let you know when funding becomes official. We have long maintained that the best way to reduce emissions of personal transportation is to reduce our reliance on massive SUVs and pickup trucks, and new data from the US Department of Energy agrees. Its latest study shows that a small electric SUV with a 300-mile range produces 52% fewer emissions during its lifetime than a comparable gasoline-powered vehicle. The data includes vehicle production emissions, including battery production for EVs, and the emissions associated with decommission at the end of life, using current US power grid mix emissions as a guideline. While this is a step in the right direction and it emphasises the need for more affordable smaller EVs, we would also like to see an increase in public transit and planning that makes it easier to use micromobility as well. 
News outlets have been giving a lot of airtime in the last few months to supposed drops in EV sales around the world. But as we've covered time and time again, registration data disagrees. This week, new sales data for the European sales for last year shows that 14.6% of all newly registered cars in the European Union last year were battery electric, with Norway topping the charts, with 81.2% of all of its new cars being battery electric. Denmark and Finland enjoyed market shares of 36.1 and 33.8% respectively, well above the EU average. Eastern European nations fared the least well, with Croatia, Slovakia and the Czech Republic languishing at the bottom of the list for EV adoption. While not in the EU, Iceland also enjoyed EV sales of 52.8%. Solid-state battery specialist Factorial Energy announced a new product this week in the form of Solstice, a new solid-state battery pack for EVs. Working alongside a key customer and development partner Mercedes-Benz, the two companies say the new solid-state battery could increase EV range by 80% over current technology thanks to the cell's increased energy density of 450 watt-hours per kilogram. As part of the announcement, Mercedes-Benz says it will begin testing factorial batteries in its vehicles within the next few months, with the goal of bringing all solid-state battery packs to its production vehicles by 2030. If everything goes according to plan, this could lead to future Mercedes-Benz models with ranges in excess of 600 miles, which is nearly 1,000 kilometres per charge. Figuring out the best way to treat electric car batteries for long life has kept academics busy for quite a while, and every few months we hear of a new study related to best charging practices. This week we heard one that's been funded by Toyota's Research Institute and carried out by Stanford University that shows one of the best ways to ensure a long life for an EV battery pack is to ensure a battery pack's first charge is carried out at a higher than normal current. Basically advocating for fast charging a battery pack for its first charge cycle, the paper turns on its head to the notion that the first battery charge cycle should be gradual, arguing that charging a brand new battery pack with a high current helps form a healthy solid electrolyte interphase layer, or SEI, that can help protect the battery from premature aging. Think of it a little like seasoning that new cast iron frying pan or skillet before cooking your eggs and bacon. Just about two weeks ago, we told you about Xpeng's newest electric car, the Mona M03. And now we're hearing that demand is so high, the company is already asking its suppliers to increase parts availability. A mid-sized sedan, the Mona M03, has a starting price of 119,800 RMB, which is about 16,815 US dollars equivalent. That's driven incredible demand for the model, with it securing 10,000 orders in the first two months minutes and 30,000 pre-orders in the first 48 hours. To ensure it can actually produce all of those cars, Xpeng is now asking its suppliers to bolster their parts production to ensure it can both increase production from its original plan levels and also ensure customers aren't waiting around for months for their new car. Watch this space. And finally for the segment, the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety is one of the two crash test organizations in the US that consumers generally look to for crash test results when buying a new vehicle. This week, the organization published its 2024 model year ratings, detailing the vehicles it's tested, and then this year, only one of the various EV pickups on sale in the US managed to win the coveted Top Safety Pick Plus award, the Rivian R1T. But before you get too excited, it's worth noting that of all of the electric pickup trucks currently in the marketplace, only the Rivian R1T has been tested to date by the IIHS. The Tesla Cybertruck hasn't, to my knowledge, nor has the F-150 Lightning, the Silverado EV, or in fact, any other commercially available electric pickups. Context is, as they say, queen. And if none of its rivals have tested yet, Rivian will naturally stand alone despite its good results.
Before we get to the last two stories, I have a quick question. Are you in the market for a new EV? Because if you are and you live in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It's packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about available vehicles, daily life with an EV and so much more. So follow the link below and start that journey today. Kiwi firm Vasi V from Auckland has officially launched its VS9 hydrofoil boat. Designed to lift out of the water, thus reducing water disturbance and improving energy efficiency, the firm has just completed its first VS9 with plans to bring future models into commercial operation with Fuller's 360, the country's largest ferry operator. Vasi V says that its VS9 can be built as a tourist vessel or be used as a full passenger ferry and can reach a top speed of 25 knots. Recharging can take place at either a marina plug or from a dedicated DC fast charging station when it can then add 0.8 nautical miles of range per minute. While the VS9 has a limited payload, the firm says it's already working on a larger version called the VS18 that will accommodate up to 100 passengers. And finally, we're off to the auctions to finish today's show with not one, but two very interesting vehicle auctions set to take place. The first is in the Netherlands, where a pristine example of the oh-so-limited production Lightyear Zero solar electric car chassis number 001 is being auctioned off. Right now, the solar electric car, which used to have a quarter million dollar price tag, is currently listed for less than the cost of an average midsize EV, but we can expect that price to go up quite a bit before the hammer finally falls. In related news and almost half a world away, Cadillac has confirmed that the very first series production Cadillac Escalade IQ is heading to the auction block in Detroit. Following a long line of GM vehicles to go under the hammer in a similar way, VIN 001 will be sold in aid of Detroit's Children's Fund. And on that note, we are in fact done for the day. Before I go though, do make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And if you haven't switched yet, it's high time to switch to Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It's really easy to make the switch and when you do it, you'll help the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back next week as usual, and in the meantime, do check out other videos on this channel, including from the lovely Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge. He's been driving a Tesla and having lots of fun. In the meantime, I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Have an amazing rest of your week. Kakite! See you next time.